The story goes that two Mayan twin boys loved to play ball. Sure, they were really good at it, but they also made a lot of noise when playing. The lords of the underworld soon became bothered by the sound and summoned the two boys to the underworld, a place the Mayans called Xibalba. As soon as the boys reached their gloomy destination, the lords of the underworld began putting them through a series of tests. Soon enough, the inexperienced twin boys failed the tests and lost their lives. But this was not in vain. This sad event resulted in the appearance of a beautiful fruit tree. Soon enough, a young woman saw a beautiful fruit on this tree and reached up to pick it. Legend has it that soon after that, she gave birth to another set of twin boys named Hunapu and Jibalanqui. Just like their ancestors, these twins were great ball players, But they were equally as loud, and the lords of the underworld became annoyed again. They decided to ask this pair of twins to come to play a game in the underworld, hoping to get rid of them too. When the twins arrived, the lord sent them through a number of frightening places. The first one was the House of Gloom, which was very dark. They then passed through the House of Knives, where they had to avoid getting injured. The twins then built a fire in the House of Cold, so that they didn't freeze, and ran through the House of Jaguars, where they tricked the animals into not eating them. Finally, they entered the House of Bats, where they seemed to have lost their luck. One of the bats managed to run off with Hunapu's head. The lords then challenged the twins to play ball with them, but the boys were clearly at a disadvantage. Jibalanqui placed a turtle on Hunapu's shoulders to make up for his lost head, and they began playing. As the lords became distracted by an animal near the court, Jibalanqui stole his brother's head and placed it back in its place. Much to the annoyance of the lords, the twins were now able to tie the game. Hunapu and Jibalanqui continued to perform a series of tricks for the lords of the underworld. One of them involved Jibalanqui injuring Hunapu and then bringing him back to life. The lords were so impressed by the twins' performance that they asked them to do the same trick on them. Of course, the twins agreed, but after performing their trick on some of the lords, they refused to revive them. Seeing what had happened, the lords of the underworld admitted defeat and begged for their lives, promising not to intervene in the lives of people ever again. Hunapu and Jibalakwi were happy to have avenged their ancestors and gained the respect of the lords. Legend has it that the lords of heaven were so impressed by the twins that they took them to live in the sky by turning them into the moon and the sun. The Maya civilization was one of the most dominant indigenous societies in history, and their folklore and traditions are still discovered and studied today. They used to live in a territory called Mesoamerica. It was made up of modern-day Mexico and parts of Central America like Guatemala, Belize, Honduras, Yucatan Peninsula, and El Salvador. They lived from 1800 to 900 BCE and up to 900 to 1500 CE. Apart from their impressive legends, the Maya were very skilled inventors. They're known for their calendars, writing systems, farming methods, and sports. Their writing, for example, was found preserved on buildings and stone monuments, as well as in rare books and pottery. It's a system made out of more than 800 hieroglyphics in various combinations. Each of those signs was said to represent a syllable. Their writing system was deciphered by accident by Tatyana Proskoryakov, an American woman who initially studied to be an architect. Since she didn't find a job in her field, she eventually became a Mayanist in her own right, despite not being academically trained. She was the first to notice that the Mayan upended frog glyph meant birth and that their toothache glyph meant the date when the king ascended to the throne. It made it easier for scientists to pinpoint birthdays as well as the names of the rulers of a specific Mayan dynasty. They also invented the concept of zero, which is seen as one of the greatest innovations in mathematics, physics, and human history altogether. Sure, even back then, people understood the idea of having nothing, but the concept of zero as a number is a relatively new invention. A fun fact about Mayans 
is that they really liked hats. The bigger your hat was, the more important you looked. Not only was it a sort of fashion statement, but it also made them look taller, which was a big deal for their aesthetic. The Mayans also came up with one of the most intricate and complex calendars in human history. It was the first to use zero as a placeholder. Their calendar ended on December 21st, 2012, which led some people to believe that it translated to the end of the world. Obviously, that was not the case. It just so happened that the date coincided with the end of a Mayan cycle of years. But you know, as advanced in science and astronomy as they were, they did make some mistakes. One of them was their belief that the world was flat. Their theory was that the four corners of the world were watched by the brother lords, who kept the sky from falling over their lands. Hats off for their menus, though, as they were well-known chocolate eaters. They turned eating chocolate into a form of art. The drink they made wasn't really like the hot chocolate we enjoy today, though. The recipe included mixing cacao with water, honey, chili pepper, cornmeal, and other ingredients to make a foamy, spicy drink. The ritual of drinking cacao was a crucial part of their celebrations. We're not done discovering all the amazing parts of their architecture and civilization. It was only a few years ago that a Maya pyramid was found at Tonina, in the Mexican state of Chiapas. It was estimated to be more than a thousand years old. The reason why it escaped archaeologists for so long was that it lay hidden under what was believed to be a natural hill. The ruins of two Mayan cities have been recently discovered in the Mexican state of Campeche. Why didn't we find them until now? Well, they were concealed by really thick vegetation, which made it difficult for archaeologists to reach them. The Mayans didn't just disappear. Their descendants are still around today, many of them choosing to live in their ancestral homelands. You can find them in Guatemala, for example, where the Maya people make up the majority of the population. Overall, the Maya ethnic group contains people that speak different Mayan languages, such as Yucatec, Quiche, Quechi, or Mopan. They had no idea what a spa day was, but the Mayans really enjoyed a nice sweat once in a while. Sweat lodges were discovered around ancient Mayan sites. They were built out of stone or adobe. These rooms were an essential part of their cleansing and healthcare rituals. One of the earliest sweat lodges was found in Quello in northern Belize and appeared to date back 3,000 years. One of the most important parts of the Mayan culture was a ball game which they named Pips. It had both political and spiritual significance. We can see ball courts at important parts of Mayan archaeological sites. The main goal of the game was to pass a rubber ball through a very high stone hoop without using your hands. Basically, it was a combination of soccer and basketball. However, it could have serious consequences. The loser could, at times, even lose his own life. Ooh, high stakes indeed! Because of this game and the need for bouncy balls, the Mayan people were some of the first cultures to use rubber. They made it using natural latex. There were different kinds of rubber depending on what natural substances the latex was mixed with. And that, my friend, is the way the ball bounces. Sorry, but you know me, I just couldn't resist. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.